Previously on the bill. I said no, but he wouldn't stop. Are you saying Smithy raped you? You being raped is hardly gossip material. Um, we can't do it now. We need to. How can I ever take him? I'd destroy him. Me. You really want me to discuss what happened here in the station? Smithy date raped you. This is serious. I need to think. What's there to think about? He took advantage. And who can prove that? I was blind drunk. Kerry! Just leave it. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to please. talk about it. Right, morning. Uh, are you ready for the off? Yep. Good. You're with me. We've got reports of a peeping time by the canal at Short Bridge Lock. Sarge, we've got a ton of paperwork. So get on and do it. You ready? Mm-hmm. You know, I reckon that's the only shop on our patch that sells these little babies. No, yeah, no thanks. Just like Mama used to make, eh? Mmm. Mm. If you get any more chipper, I think I'm gonna throw up. Chipper? Yeah, I suppose I am, actually. Makes a change, eh? Get over carry at last, then. Quite the opposite. Eh? Well, I don't want to count my chickens, but we're going out for a drink tonight, and, you know, you never know. Right. No action in your love life right now? 406 from Sierra Oscar, disturbance at Derelict Building, 1919 Calico Street. A fight involving several males. Informant concerned about an individual on the roof. Possible jumper. Sierra Oscar, 416, received. Well, no sign of false entry and no sign of this mystery man in a balaclava. Anything? Not down there. So, um, what's the story with you and Cameron? There is no story. And it's personal. So you and him? Let's just get on with this, shall we, Sarge? Go ahead. Possible suspect seen crouching by boat approximately 300 metres down from your position on your side. Over. Received. Over. Come on, Kerry. Get it together, will ya? Oi, come back! Sierra Oscar 355, we're on side of Calico Street. Over. Oi, stop! No sign of the jumper. Oh. Did you call an ambulance? Yeah, about five minutes ago. Sierra Oscar from 355. I'm checking on an ambulance urgent that required a calico straight over. Did you see what happened? <sighs> Oi! Stay where you are! Oi! I said don't move! Uh, no! Right. Smithy, wait. Let's, let's get help. No, we haven't got any time. Go and call an ambulance. Sierra Oscar from 202, ambulance required on the towpath on Shortbridge Lock, Hanley Field. Over. Where's the ambulance? It's on its way. He was on. Oh. Uh, grab his legs. Grab his legs. Oh. There you go. Put him down. Oh. Oh. He isn't breathing. He ain't got a pulse. Right, okay. You wait up there for the ambulance crew and guide them down. You start compressions. Cheers. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Go. <coughs> go on. Come on, mate. I didn't take the plan so you could cop out. <sighs> Go on. Stop. He's got a pulse. That's it, mate. Oh, well done. <laughs> Here we go. One malacarba. <laughs> Best double check all the boats, make sure we haven't missed anything. Eh? <sighs> Try not to move, mate. 
We've got an ambulance on the way, yeah? You're still oh. conscious. Poor oh, son. You got a name, mate? Dick Michael. You okay here? I'm gonna take a look inside. Yeah, sure. Dick, mate. Keep still. What are you doing up here? Glad to see you got your priorities right. Now, there is a bloke lying injured on the bonnet of a car down there. Do you know anything about that? No. No, of course you don't. I haven't done anything. You're drunk. You're coming with me. Let's go. Get up. Get up. Get up. Another one? Yeah, I found him upstairs. Collecting cash. It was all over the place. Yeah? Well, a fool had a fistful too. Been fighting, haven't we? Or was he just paying you for his first flying lesson? No. Huh? No. Who you been punching then? Yourself? Easy. I haven't punched anyone. Get him back to the station. Don't go mucking us about. I'm not in the mood, all right? Well, there's no sign he got inside any of these boats. Let's get back to Smithy. What's the rush? Okay, nice. Oh, it's not often you get to see the Sarge looking all wet and heroic, is it? No. I can totally understand why you fancy him. Do what? Well, I'm not surprised you kicked Cameron into touch. Honey, it wasn't like that. Oh, come on. I'd be more surprised if you said you didn't end up with Smithy that night the way you two were staring at each other when I left. Honey. Don't worry. I won't say anything. Honey. Oh, don't deny it, Kerry. You were after him big time. <coughs> I was checking out the boat. Somebody else's boat. OK, so I'm nosy. I didn't think anyone would mind. And because of you lot, I'm in here coughing up one of my lungs. What's with the balaclava? It was cold. Oh, come on, Mr. Watson. I'm sure you've run me through your system or whatever it is. Do I have a record? No. Then explain what you were doing there. I'm thinking of moving on to a houseboat, all right. I've got a good mind to sue. If your macho mate hadn't sneaked up on me, I wouldn't be in this mess. If you've got a problem with Sergeant Smith's behaviour, I suggest you make a formal complaint. Oh, don't worry, I will be. You want to tell us how Mr. Carmichael ended up on the ground? I didn't push him. But you were arguing over the money, yeah? No. Where did the money come from? I don't know anything about no money. It was just there. It's mine. The money's mine. It's yours? Yeah. I finally got my benefits for it, didn't I? Ask Henry. Uh, this is PC Hemingway. So you and Henry are acquainted? Of course. Best of mates. We've been down at the same hostel. What were you doing there? You and Mr Carmichael were trespassing. I dust there all the time. On your own? Yeah, it's quiet. I don't get bothered. Except today. You got disturbed this morning, didn't you? Is that why you ended up in a fight? No. Look at those hands. You're saying those injuries weren't sustained for fighting? No. Care to explain? I was practicing being a policeman, dragging me knuckles along the ground. You wouldn't be clever, fine. But there are witnesses. We'll find out what you're up to. So you just carry on wasting my time. Okay. Well, I was minding my own business. Some blokes jumped me. There was a scrap. But I didn't push anyone off the building. Tell us about the fight. Did old Henry say there was a fight? <laughs> so you're getting confused again. The booze does that to a man. Sad. <laughs> there was no fight. The money fell out of my pocket. I was um, just trying to pick it up, tripped. Landed on the windowsill, went straight over the bleeding edge. So Henry didn't push you out? I 
be stupid. He's my best mate, isn't he? And I'd very much like to see him. Henry's been arrested for the assault. On me? Yeah. Then you best unarrest him. Because I ain't pressing charges. Henry's lying. I wouldn't trust either of them as far as I could spit. But well, if Henry did push him, why did he stick around? For the money. But Dick puts Henry in the clear. If Dick wants to play dumb, forget them both. I thought when your cuddly side comes out. Have you got a withdrawal statement? No. Spoken to the security guard at the factory. He hasn't turned up yet. Then I suggest you find him. You come back when you get a proper lead. Otherwise, you let this Henry guy go. OK, Mr Banks, you're free to go. Come on, hurry it up. Come on. You ain't getting a free bed for the night. Ouch. Ladies. Oh, I preferred the wet look, Sarge. I thought you were going to let me towel you dry. Careful, honey. Don't start something you might later regret. Anything from our aquanaut? Just shouting about police brutality, but sticking by a story. I reckon that bang on the head must have left him thinking we are all stupid. Maybe he's got a point. What was that supposed to mean? Nothing, Sarge. Don't make this any more difficult than it already is. Then talk to me. Does Cameron know? No, he doesn't. Not yet. Now, I asked you to give me some space. Kerry! Quit acting like a div around Smithy. That doesn't help. Couldn't help myself. Oh, then just forget I told you about it, OK? Just erase it from your brain. You can't be expected to work alongside him. What if he tries to force himself on someone else? You saw him with honey. The longer you leave it, the less chance there is of getting some justice. Who is going to believe me, Yvonne? Honey will just tell you I had it coming to me. What? Honey said she saw me in the pub with Smithy. Did she tell you that? Yeah. Hmm. Taste a bit of gossip. Private. Yet she doesn't know about the rape. Oh, well, that makes me feel a lot better. You would never encourage one of your cases to let the sod walk away. This is different. Why? Because he's a copper? I don't think so. Just stop it, OK? I didn't ask you to get involved. Yeah, but you need help. We've got to do something. There is no we, Yvonne. This is my thing. This is my problem. So make it official. Have you thought what I would actually achieve? I am accusing a highly popular officer of being a date rapist. Who do you think is going to come out of this worse? If you say a word of this to anyone, I'll just deny it, OK? So keep your mouth shut. Nice to see you back at your post. Can I ask you where you were when people were falling off your building? Well, I was doing the rounds. Oh, where was that? Birmingham. I saw my lunch. Should we check that with your supervisor, mate? Look, I can't afford to lose this job. So you got a number for your management? Hang on a minute. I was told to get lost for a couple of hours. Who by? I don't know. Telepathy, was it? No, the telephone. Look, I didn't see anyone. There was an envelope of cash left outside, and that was it. I disappeared. Do you always have to kick vagrants and the like out of the building? Why? Oh, yeah. uh, too far off the beaten track. It's pretty quiet, mostly. No regulars dosing down here. Well, that's what I get paid for. Can I have a spin through security types? Yeah, who I guess. They're empty. I must have forgotten to load the machine. Your boss is wasting his money. Be better off without you. We'll take a look around. Go ahead. In the meantime, you might want to think of an excuse for those missing tapes. See, yeah, Oscar from 416. Just arriving at Carol's Toys on Candy High Road, over. Received. You and Kerry, all right? Has it actually got anything to do with you? Kerry's a mate. She's having a tough time right now. The Cameron? I figure it was more of a professional issue. All right, all right, you can get off me, you know. I mean, I'm a season two, you know, I've got right. You? I haven't done anything. Yeah, and your mate Dick's not suffering up sent use. Maybe it's just a bad dream, eh? You want to tell me what he's been up to? Right, how about 
you disappear this afternoon as well and you come and give us a hand down the station. But I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you found our missing tapes. The report said you were refusing to leave the store. Were you planning on nicking something? I was going to pay for the stuff. Pay or steal? No, the, the shop assistant grabbed me and a lot of toys went over in the struggle, but I was only trying to choose a toy. I thought you usually shopped in the off-license. Oh, I'm trying to give up, aren't I? Yeah? Yeah, I'm sober. They want him to pay for the toys he soiled. Oh, don't be stupid. I want to go. Well, see yourself arrested for criminal Get damage. Off. You Get off! Hey, calm down! He's back. Yeah, obviously likes the hospitality. Come on. Any more news on Dick? Ah, uh, the docs gave him a thumbs up. But his mouth's still shut about who helped him out the mm. window. Listen, if you get a chance, ask him about 50 quid notes stuck to the outside of a window on the second floor. Mm. Oh, you accompanied Smithy on that canal boat trip this morning? Yes, Mum. There's still no explanation for the peeping Tom, but there's nothing to arrest him for. Oh, you reckon? Well, I've just had a call from one of the boat owners. His wife's been attacked. She's inside. Please. I just came back and found her. Thank God I was only away one night. Here, Ronnie. I was buying toys. So your best mate's stuck in hospital after a serious accident and you decide to go on a shopping spree. But we know you and Dick stay at the same hostel. Are you feeling too guilty to pay him a visit? No! The toys were for my grandson. Your grandson? I bet his mum loves it when you turn up on the doorstep. He's never really met me. It's his birthday tomorrow. He's four. I wanted to buy him something. Without money? No! Do you know how many sob stories we hear every day? You've had more drunks in here than I you... wasn't drunk! If I turn up drunk, they won't let me within a mile of him. I'm getting straight so that I can go to see him, OK? And it's not as easy as you think, but I'm getting there. Do you think I'd be sober with this burning a hole in my shoe? What's happened? I came home and found her gagged, blindfolded, and tied to the bed. Mrs. Tirrett. Oh, isn't it obvious she's been raped? <laughs> the neighbours said that you lot were here earlier today. All over the place like a bad smell. Now, were you looking for him? The attack? Mr. Terry, could you come outside, please? If I find that you could have prevented this, I'm going to sue your backs from here to Timbuktu. Where did you get a nice, clean, crispy £50 note, eh? Stuck to a second floor window. Um. Um. Bookies. I won it, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Which one? I can't remember. Which horse? I forget. I've left the betting slip in the other suit. <sighs> now you're going to show me a nice clean picture of the assault so we can all go home. Sadly not. Our absentee guard has managed to destroy the CCTV tape from this morning. Oh, good. So what are we looking at? Bits and pieces from the day before. That's why I thought it best to consult you. Now, Henry, the guy we pulled for the assault on Dick Carmichael, seems quite familiar with this guy in the suit. In this car, we've got a partial index. We think it belongs to a Danny Partridge. Now, also, the security guard says that vagrants never slept in the building, while our guy Henry says they slept there all the time. Meanwhile, Dick Carmichael insisted that they both doss down at a hostel. So whatever, this Henry guy's story just doesn't add up. That's about it. OK, we'll check out the car and Partridge, see what he says. Follow up with his homeless shelter and see if they can shed any light on our vagrant. Mom. Still think you're wasting my time. Need a hand? No. Yvonne, OK, is she? I've got work to do, yeah. Will you just leave me to it? Easy, Tiger. I was just asking. We had words, all right? She reckon she's got the solution to all my problems. Right. So she knows about what Smithy did to you. And she wants you to kick up a fuss. Perhaps Yvonne's right. Maybe you do need to make it official. Well, you've changed your tune. 
Yeah, I know, but I've seen how well you're coping with it. And coping? I, I haven't even started to deal with this. So why not front it out? Otherwise, you won't be able to get on with the rest of your life. I don't want to talk about this, OK? With you or anyone. You'd better have a satisfactory explanation as to why you and your mates failed to find my wife. I mean, why should we be bothered to pay our taxes if you can't even be bothered to do your job properly? Look, we thoroughly searched the area, OK? There was nothing to see. What more do you want me to say? I can't see through walls. Mr. Terry? Mr. Terry wants to make a formal complaint and I'm doing my best to smooth things over and then you go and behave like a buffoon. Would you care to explain why? I've been having some personal problems, Mum. Oh, would you like to share them with us? No, Mum. Then tell me what happened this morning and explain why Mr. Tirrett believes that we did not do our job properly. OK. I thoroughly searched the area. I didn't see any signs of forced entry on any of the boats. I didn't hear any sounds of distress. I didn't see anything to warrant further investigation. That's because the poor woman was tied up and gagged. Yes, Mum. I feel bad about this. Because you and Honey made a mistake. Even though you arrested a suspect in a balaclava near the Tirrett's boat and then what? Sergeant Smith seemed happy with the situation. Sergeant Smith had just been in the freezing water and made it your responsibility to check the boat. I realise that. Just because there's a bit of excitement when a suspect takes a dive is no excuse for you and Honey to turn off the common sense. Now, no one's saying we could have stopped the attack, but we could have at least reduced the Tirrett's suffering. An apology might help. Yes, Mum. You're the survey officer on this case? Yes. You don't cock that up, all right? Oh, and in future, please take responsibility for your actions. I do not recommend you trying to shift the blame onto other people. Danny Partridge. Yeah? What's up? Just an ongoing investigation, sir. Do you know a homeless man by the name of Henry Banks? Do I look like I know homeless people? Just answer the question. You might have met him yesterday on Calico Street. Well, I've got a lock up down the industrial estate. There's always a few bums asking you for the price of a cuppa, but don't know anybody by that name, no. Can you tell us where you were this afternoon between one and two? At the office. Why? There was an incident there earlier today involving a homeless chap. Oh. What sort of incident? Someone was seriously injured in a fall. Sorry. Can't help you. And, uh, if you'll excuse me, I've got a delivery to make. Porn, yeah? Yeah. All above board. Good clean fun. I've got a mate up west who knocks him out in his sex shop. So, can I go? Yeah. Thanks for your help. No worries. You should have asked him for one of his videos. Just because my love life's not station news doesn't mean I'm some single sad all right? Is that really all you can tell me? He came in. He tied me up. He touched me. He... I know this is difficult, OK, but everything you tell us is going to help. I don't know what he did to me. I don't know what he did. Well, did you, did you try and fight him off? Of course. I went for his face with everything I had. Wouldn't you? How is Dick? He's in some years with multiple fractures. It's a little more serious than usual. More than usual? Life on the streets. Visits to A&E are pretty common for these guys. We think the fight was about money. What, with Henry? No way, not those two. It was quite a lot of cash, over a couple of hundred quid. Look, it doesn't matter. Henry and Dick stick together like glue. They're the best of friends. Where would they get that kind of cash? That's none of my business. No, but you look like the kind of person who care about a man being thrown out of a window two floors up. Look, Dick's not telling us the truth. People around here see the police and they get nervous. Yeah, with good reason. Henry's been arrested again. What for now? Criminal damage. 
drunk? No, but he had a 50 quid note on him. But are you aware of any money being flashed around? They've been doing some cash in hand work. For who? That's all I know. But you might be able to point us in the right direction. OK. I'll do what I can. This is Tira, I'm DC Perkins. Now, I've reviewed the videotape of the interview you gave to my colleague here earlier. And there's just a few points I'd like to go over with you, if I may. I didn't see his face. Can we go from the beginning? I don't know what I can tell you that's different from what I've already said. Look, <clears throat> I understand how difficult it is, Mrs. Tyrrell, but if we don't get it right, and if we get the attacker, he could walk on the slightest discrepancy in your statement, yeah? It's all so confusing. OK, now, we've thoroughly investigated the scene and we cannot find a point of forced entry. How do you think he might have got in? <laughs> do you want to stop for a while, Mrs. Terry? They'd want to speak up and help each other. Don't understand. I'm pretty scared of the consequences. Doing the right thing isn't always in the victim's interest. So, any idea who's been flashing the cash about? Some sort has been paying most of the homeless to beat each other up. What? Why? The suits come along and cheer. The last tramp standing gets a bonus. You got a name for him? No. Description? Smart city type. You sure that's all they know? Yes. Mind if I have a quick word with one of your inmates? Depends. On well, have you finished your paperwork or not? Yeah. Yeah, sorry about earlier, Sarge. Who are you after? Thanks, Henry. Charged and bailed half hour ago. Make this quick, I've got a rape case to deal with. Well, we still haven't got a who, but we're pretty certain as to why Carl Michael ended up falling. Tramp bashing, latest import from across the pond. Fight club for the homeless. Yeah. Bloke, let's say Partridge, comes along with some of his mates, splashes the cash and encourages the vagrants to fight for it. Live entertainment for a select few sickos. Or videoed and sold in less than reputable adult entertainment shops. I take it this Partridge guy doesn't have his name on the credits? No. But hospital records show that Dick and Henry have been through A&E six or seven times in the last month and a half. Always suspicious injuries and no explanation. Well, as links go, it doesn't sound too convincing. Unfortunately, your best bet is still to stick Carmichael, so put some pressure on, see if he'll spill. I won't be happy if I find out that you're investigating an accident. These homeless blokes may be willing participants. So, he put his hand over your mouth from behind and pressed you down onto the bed, is that right? Yes. Face down? Yes. Then he tied me to the bed. He held you down and he tied you to the bed at the same time. Did he kneel on you, sit on you? No. <clears throat> You're going to have to help me with some of the details here. Your husband said that he found you on your back, is that right? The rapist, he turned me over. Could you show me how he tied your hands to the bed, please? Just imagine this is your arm. So if he used both hands to tie you up, how did he hold you down? I don't know. How tight did he tie you? Tight enough to cut off your circulation? I suppose so. Got any marks, Kerry? No. Signs of intercourse, but no bruising. I've already explained to your colleagues what I was doing. Well, I say you were disturbed by the officers as you made your getaway. <laughs> I was just having a nose around. Was that before or after you attacked the occupant of the boat that you fell from? Don't know what you're talking about. There's been an allegation of rape. <laughs> rape? <laughs> you're joking. I'll be asking you to provide some DNA samples. Mr. Watson, <laughs> I think you should start taking this seriously, don't you? He left me tied up and he went. OK. You have some of the pieces of the puzzle, but they don't quite fit. Then there's the missing pieces. No forced entry. No real injuries. No sign of a struggle. I want to see my husband. Then there's what you said to Kerry. You said you tried to fight him off. Yes, so? You said, and I quote, I went for his face with everything I had. I did, yes. We think we found the guy that did this to you, Mrs. Tirrett. Really? 
Hmm. He hasn't got a mark on him. Well, you must have the wrong man. He was stopped for acting suspiciously in the vicinity of your boat at approximately 1.25 this afternoon. He was wearing a balaclava. Does the name Dave Watson ring any bells for you, Mrs. Tirrett? Oh, God. He was the guy we fished out of the drink near your boat. I take it you didn't know that. Also, when I said did this to you, I didn't mean attack you. I just meant tied you up. Your husband didn't know about you and Dave Watson, did he? No. We all like a bit of spice in our love lives, Mrs. Tirrett. And I'm not here to pass judgment on your particular brand of kinkiness. A bit of James Bond adds atmosphere. But keep it in the bedroom, will you? I'm sorry. Me too. You're lucky we don't charge the both of you with wasting police time. Show her out, Kerry. Oh no, I wouldn't go out that way if I was you. Mr. I knew, I knew you were up to something. Oh, I, I bloody knew it. Back off. But this, how could you let me think? Oh, You've been raped. Back off. How could you? Uh, if you have a seat over here, Marilyn will show you out the back way. Okay. Shut up. People like her get right up my nose. You know, making sure that the little lies are safe at all costs. Look at the amount of time that's been wasted on them. Well, she was scared, all right? Look at the way her husband's reacted. Yeah, well, can you blame him? Just show Mrs. Tirrett out, Marilyn. Oh, you come to tuck me in? In your dreams. What's going on? What? You've been through A&E six times in the last two months. Been unlucky. Now, how long before you're going to tell us you've been a film star? <laughs> you do know it's illegal to encourage people to injure themselves for money. I don't know what you're talking about. And right now we're looking for Danny Partridge. How long do you think he's going to protect you for? I can't tell you. Don't you think this lot's enough? Partridge can't harm you if he's in custody. It's not Partridge. Who then? You kill me. But I'm losing my patience. Who is it? Henry. Look at that, eh? Maybe we should start distributing leaflets. The tale of the boy who cried wolf. <laughs> well, they were the first complaint when you weren't in the right place at the right time, weren't they? I'm sorry I was so off with you earlier. Have you decided what you're going to do about Smithy? Yeah. I'm going to let it drop. All right. Are you sure that's for the best? Yeah, I am. I just want to let it all go. You know, guilty or innocent, I don't think I can go through with this whole procedure. I'll be there for you. Why are you doing this? I just want to make sure you're happy, that's all. Well... You're going to have to let me suffer in silence. I just want to move on and I want to clear everything up with Cameron. Well, you've got to do what you've got to do, I suppose. Yeah. But look, thanks for being such a good mate, though. See ya. Oh, temper, temper. Tough day. Yeah, it was that bloke from this morning who reminded me too much of my dad, that's all. There's always going to be some case or some victim that gets you in the end, isn't there? Never pegged you as the emotional type. Oh, thanks a bunch. The force needs us tough guys, but we do have feelings as well, you know that. Sorry. Didn't mean to sound rude. No, that's all right. I haven't been entirely honest. Look, a colleague and a good mate of mine's been ditched by a boyfriend and abused by a senior colleague on the same night. I wanted to be there for a bit. This isn't Kerry we're talking about, is it? Maybe I've got this wrong. No, it's all right. Well, I don't see how this isn't going to blow up in our faces. I used to look up to Sergeant Smith. But if somebody doesn't say anything, you might go and do it all over again. You saying Smithy raped Kerry? According to Yvonne, Yes.
Sierra Oscar 355, we've just arrived at Danny Partridge's house. Over. Received. You're very quiet this evening. Nothing much to say, that's all. Must be losing my charm. That's the guy from the factory. The one who called the ambulance. Wait, hold it there. Hold it. Just get off! Okay. Just leave this me alone! You're coming with us. I haven't done anything. Check inside. What's with me? All right, you know where Partridge is? No. Why the panic? No, I'm just... I haven't done anything. Catherine, you need to take a look at this. Let's go. Share one for your article. Fight in progress at Old Lowther Road Factory near the Lake Estate. Over. Sierra Oscar received. Right. What do you know about this? Oh, 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 no resistance, it's all yours now. Keep him away from me. Keep him away. He was terrified. Partridge. Ha! Why'd you do it? You saw Dick. I did it for him. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I wish you could have been there to watch it. Should have got Partridge to go up on that ledge. And how did you get Dick to go up there? Don't be soft. That was Partridge. I'm giving you Partridge. That's not the way Dick tells it. Huh? Dick told me you made him climb out the window so you could collect. No. I should be at the hospital, not here. Our uh, FMA says you're fit enough for interview. I shouldn't be being interviewed on the victim. Well, there's more than a few victims on this tape, Mr. Partridge. Well, it's nothing to do with me. Really? Me? Really? This tape shows you as part of a crowd encouraging vagrants to engage in violent and dangerous activities. Uh, just a bit of fun. Just a bit of fun. Whoever made this tape is in serious trouble. Is he? Got roped in by a mate. What's his name? Robert. More of an acquaintance than a mate, you know. Surname. Didn't ask. That I'd had a few bevies and he said it'd be fun to go and watch. Vagans didn't seem to mind, so, you know, thought it was kosher. Oh, chucking someone off a roof kosher? So I know nothing about that. Well, that's funny, cos I've got two witnesses prepared to make statements saying that you did. That you set it up, in fact. Well, they're lying. We'll see. Is that it? For now. Have you got enough on him? On the word of two vagrants whose stories don't match, it doesn't look good. And the video evidence isn't enough for GBH, so I would say that Partridge should probably walk. Oh, lovely. You are not coming <laughs> back on this boat! <laughs> hey, get off me! Stay, get away! Oh, Joy. The cabaret continues. Well, I'll let them carry on and we might get to charge someone with a real crime today. Well, aren't we supposed to get involved in a domestic? This stuff between lovers all gets a bit hazy, doesn't it? All right, you take Mr. Tyrant to the car. I'll have a word with the injured party. You're lying. He wouldn't say that. You're trying to get me to incriminate Dick. That's how you work. He's the one that's slinging mud, Henry, and right now it's sticking to you. I was trying to get straightened out. And you nearly made it. Why do it, Henry? It was Partridge. Your word against Dick's. Partridge was always trying to get us to go further. Every time. He kept saying he could sell the movies abroad. America would make loads. I wouldn't go up on that ledge. But Partridge insisted. Said he'd dump us, so Dick went up. Why would Dick do it if you wouldn't? Cos I couldn't. Cos I was scared. But he knew how much I needed to get straightened out for tomorrow for me grandson. He knew I needed the money. And he fell. I thought he'd done it for me. I thought it was my fault. But he hadn't done it for me, had he? He'd done it for the money. And now he stabbed me in the back. 
You've been an idiot, Henry. No. Maybe it's time to think about getting yourself sorted out. You know, for your grandson's sake. Can I suggest you sit down? Mike! The guys are itching to make an arrest. Don't make me do it. Mike! I hate her. I have done everything that she wanted. I'll give her anything she asked for. It was her bloody idea for me to take a job out of town. But I'm not mine. Good money, yeah? Enough? Who do you think paid for this little lot? No. I've always been there for her, you know. Life's not always been peachy, but I've, I've, I've look, looked out for her. And this is my reward. I know how you feel. She didn't even respect me enough to go to a hotel. Look, flying off the handle isn't going to make you feel any better. And none of your touchy-feely forgiveness rubbish is going to work either. Do you mind if I make a suggestion? Pack a bag. Get yourself into a decent hotel. The missus? Well, why not leave her here? Let her stew in all of this. Do anything but make trouble and get arrested tonight. You promise me? And in the morning, if you still feel like getting revenge, do something clever. Something that hurts. Something that doesn't get you into trouble. Understand? Yeah. Good. Looks like we're off the hook with that Tyrick complaint. Thanks. Listen. I'm not really sure where we're at. That night was a disaster, you know it. Whatever happened, it wasn't right. I'm sorry? On the job, I can handle it being around you, all right? But outside work, I think we should avoid each other. I'm sorry. Hi. Are you still on for tonight? Yeah, absolutely. That girl's got her priorities all modelled up. You mean Gary? Yeah. Give the girl a choice and she gets it all wrong. I'd have Smithy any day. Is he all right? Yeah. Why'd you ask? Mm. I just heard a nasty story. A bit rough between the sheets. Rough? Mm. What, like, no mean yes type of rough? Mm-hmm. Who told you that? Two minutes. I hope that smiles back by some collateral. One pay as you go mobile phone retrieved from this guy who we picked up at Partridge's premises. Now he's a junior employee and he wasn't saying much until we informed him that you can in fact trace 999 calls. So we've placed him at the scene of Carmichael's fall. Poor lad is in a bit of a panic. An eyewitness, congratulations. Let's hope this one gives a statement, eh? Well, it seems he wasn't daunted by the prospect of working in the porn industry with Partridge. Well, a young man's a fantasy job. However, vagrant fighting wasn't exactly his cup of tea. OK, we'll get a statement. I'll let Partridge know. And Henry? Well, this guy puts him in the clear. Reckons it was Dick Carmichael who's the vagrant's ringleader and Henry's just another guy taking punches for cash. And we'll still be able to charge him for the assault on Partridge. Great. Okay. Well, I reckon my lot deserve a drink next time down the pub. Uh, might have been a double. Look, Kerry, I'm really sorry about today. I know you think I'm putting pressure on you, but it's only because I want you to do the right thing. Yeah. I've decided I'm not going to pursue it. Why? Because... Even though in my heart I know I didn't consent to have sex, Loads of people saw me in the pub with Smithy. I was completely drunk. I went outside with him, I kissed him. What happened before doesn't matter. At that moment, you said no. I went home with him, Yvonne. Are you blaming yourself? Is this what this is about? What, you think you were giving Smithy the wrong signal? No, but... 
I've been working with the guy all day and I don't feel any hate. Where's the hate? You, as well as anyone, should know. Not all victims feel the same. But that's just it. I don't feel like a rape victim. So you're letting him off the hook? No. I've just decided I want to be with Cameron. And I've told Smithy to just stay away. Well, I still think you're wrong. But it has to be your decision. Thanks. I've got to go and meet Cameron. I'll see you. See ya. Congratulations. Good result with Partridge. Ah, thanks. Want to get a beer to celebrate? Ah, uh, no can do. So you've already forgotten the reason for this morning's chipper mood. Oh, of course. Cameron's planning to bed Kerry. Well, a little crude, but uh, kind of the right idea. I think you should take a bit easier with Kerry, though, don't you? That love advice from Gabriel himself, I'll bear that in mind. I'm serious. So am I. Kerry and I are hardly strangers. Yeah, that's true, but quite a bit of water's passed over the bridge in the last few weeks, hasn't it? What are you talking about? This whole smithy thing. What whole smithy thing? Oh, God, mate. You don't know, do you? Gabby, what are you talking about? What's happened? I am so sorry, mate. You're bound to hear about it sooner or later. Word around the station is that Kerry's been raped by smithy. I'm sorry. Next time on the beer. I have to tell Cameron that Smithy raped you. You what? Stay off! I, I trusted you and you've gone and told everybody. I'm gonna kill you, mate! Please, please take. I'm seriously warning you. Put a bomb on him!